Hey guys, so today we're going to be going step by step on how to get your operating authority. And I will actually screen share my screen so that you can follow along. Now, a couple of things before we get started that you should know is when you start registering your trucking business, it's kind of like a game of cat and mouse. And there are a lot of things that have to come together at once, a lot of little pieces. So let's go through them really, really quickly so that you understand what to expect. Number one, you have to pay a $300 filing fee in order to get your MC and DOT numbers. The MC number will allow you to perform interstate travel, meaning you're going from state to state, while a DOT number is required for both interstate and intrastate travel. Number two, you will get your DOT number right away once you finish the registration and your MC numbers will follow shortly thereafter. So you will know what your DOT and MC numbers are, but there is a 21 day protesting period where the FMCSA gives 21 days for people all over the United States to say you should not be getting these numbers. So after the 21 day period passed, you will get an official letter from the FMCSA, which is the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, saying that you have applied and the application is processing for your MC and DOT numbers. Now, this is the super important part. Once you apply for your authority, you have 90 days to get insurance on file. And insurance can be pretty tough to get sometimes. You have to shop around and you have to see which insurance suits you best. The insurance requirements are $1 million in liability insurance for the FMCSA. Brokers also require $150,000 in cargo insurance and if you're driving a reefer, you will also need reefer breakdown insurance. Now, if you don't have insurance on file by that 90 day period, your application will be dismissed and you will have to pay $300 again, and you'll have to submit a request to get it undismissed. You will also need a registered agent in every state you plan to operate in by the 90 day mark of your filing. So if you don't have registered agents set up by the 90 day period, your application is going to be dismissed and you will have to pay the $300 again. Without further ado, let's get started. I'll show you how to get your MC and DOT numbers. All right, guys, so here I am screen sharing with you so we can go through this together so that there are no questions um, along the way. So let's get started. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna go to fmcsa.dot.gov. And once you're there, you're going to click right here on registration and you're going to click on get authority to operate because you are a new applicant and you want your authority to operate. Once you get here, you scroll down a little bit and you will see this heading apply for authority and you're going to click right here. After that, you will click I understand, take me to registration. So once you're here, this is the unified registration system. If you're a new applicant, you're going to click new applicant. Then you're going to click next right here. So at this point, I'm going to make the video a little bit shorter because I could go through each and every step explaining every page that you're going to come across while trying to register your company, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So I will only focus on those pages where you might have some questions. If you do have any questions about the pages that I don't include in this video, please comment down below and I will be happy to answer any questions you have. So application contact type. So you can either be a company contact or applicant representative. Uh, you would be a company contact. You're not getting anyone else probably to fill out this application for you. So you will put company contact and then you will put in all your information. All right, then you come up to the business description. So we'll click next to proceed. Do you have a Dun & Bradstreet number? If you don't, then just click no. It doesn't affect the application at all. Uh, then legal business name. If you have an LLC or a corporation, this should match your articles of organization. So then you have a DBA. A DBA is doing business as. If you have a name doing business as, then you put it in. If you don't, you just click next without filling this part out. Now we have the question about the principal place of business. If your address that you provided in the applicant information is the same address you are using as your principal place of business, and this is the same address you use to register your company, you click yes. 
If you have an office and registered your business elsewhere in a different address, you click no. So here you have the option of using your EIN to register for your authority or using your social security number. We will start answering some questions about what we're planning to do in terms of operations. So the first question is, will you operate as an intermodal equipment provider? Here it explains what an intermodal equipment provider is, and then you just answer yes or no. In this case, it's a no. Then the next question is, are you going to transport property? Now, if you are a common carrier, which is basically the person who is going to go on the load board to get commodities, you will click yes here. So you are transporting property. Now, next question is, will you receive compensation for transporting property belonging to others? The answer is yes, because brokers will be giving you loads that belong to shippers. So you will be transporting property that belongs to the shipper or receiver, so yes. Now, what type of property will you be transporting? Are you going to be transporting hazardous materials? In that case, you have to have hazmat certification. Are you going to be transporting household goods? This is only applicable if you are like a moving company and you're transporting goods as a moving company. Are you going to be transporting exempt commodities? Usually what you're going to be transporting is other non-hazardous freight, which is the general freight that you would be getting from the market from the load board. So I would click here if this applies to you and then you click next. So now the question that we talked about in this video and in the previous video, are you going to be an interstate carrier crossing state lines? For that, you will need an MC number. If yes, you click yes. Now, will you be transporting your own property? Usually it's a no, but this is something you have to decide. Now, will you provide brokerage services? No, because you're applying as a common carrier, correct? You're going to be the person transporting the goods, not the person brokering the load. So you will click no here. So now are you going to be a freight forwarder? Now, a freight forwarder is, it's described right here, but a freight forwarder is someone, it's like a broker who's brokering out loads, but also has their warehouse where they keep those loads. Uh, are you going to operate a cargo tank facility? For the most part, it's gonna be a no. Are you going to operate as a drive away, for the most part, it's going to be a no. Tow away, no. Next. And also something to note, if you don't understand a term, you just have to hover over it and it will tell you exactly what it means. Next is you're going to choose which kind of freight you're going to transport. And this is going to also be something to consider when getting insurance because insurance, cargo insurance specifically, will be looking at what kind of freight you're going to be transporting. So for the most part, if you're a refrigerated carrier, you can say you're going to be transporting general freight, no household goods, no motor vehicles, but you might be also hauling fresh produce, um, you might be hauling meat, you might be hauling refrigerated food, and you might be hauling beverages. So this is something you have to look at and you have to decide what kind of commodities are you actually going to be transporting. Here you'll have to say how many commercial motor vehicles you plan to operate. If you're a small company starting with one truck, you'll just click one and then you'll have to say whether it's owned or leased. Now in order to proceed to next, you actually have to put the zeros everywhere else where it doesn't apply to you. So that's what we're going to do. Now you have to say whether you're going to be operating in Canada and Mexico as well. If you don't plan on operating in Canada or Mexico, you just say zero because zero of your vehicles will be operating in those regions. Now here you have to provide information how many trucks are going to be operating in interstate commerce only, meaning how many trucks are going to be registered to cross state lines. If you're planning to be an interstate carrier, you will put in the number of trucks that are going to be operating that way. Now, the next question is very similar, but it's about intrastate commerce. If you decide that you want to be an intrastate carrier only, you're going to put in your truck here. So if you have one truck that's only going to be operating within the state borders, then you're going to put that one truck here. So this question is asking whether you will be transporting property or freight on a vehicle that weighs over 10,001 pounds. For semi-truck and trailers, the answer is always yes. Right away, once you say yes to that last question, you will see that the financial responsibility requires a minimum of $750,000 in insurance. Now, I know in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that it's going to be $1 million in liability, and here's the thing. 
The FMCSA doesn't require $1 million in liability insurance. They require a minimum of $750,000. However, you will not be able to get any loads if you do not have $1 million in liability because that is what brokers require. Something to note. So the next question is about affiliation with others. So this basically asks, have you ever had a DOT or MC number before? Have you ever managed a trucking company? Have you ever been an owner of a trucking company? If this is your first time applying for trucking authority, you will say no. Now there are compliance certifications. These are a bunch of statements where you have to say, yes, you certify or exit the application you have to register for a portal account. So the FMCSA portal is something, again, we'll get into a future video, uh, but it's something to manage your company on the FMCSA side. The first question is, should you be assigned as the company contact for the FMCSA portal? Usually the answer will be yes. Now you're going to provide the user ID you will use and the password to log into your FMCSA portal. And then you have the payment info, which is the last step. Here are some disclosures as to the fact that the payment is non-refundable. You read through them, then you click next to proceed. This is the point I leave you at. You put in all your payment information, you will click next, and then you're basically ready. The final page will be your DOT number. And then later on, in about a week or so, you will receive an email with your MC number as well. But of course, it's not official until the 21-day period has passed, the protesting period from the FMCSA. And then within 90 days, you also have to have insurance and registered agents in every state on file in order to actually have active operating authority. So I hope this helps. See you in the next video.